Welcome to the second case for the insights. Um, here we will design a bridge with attachment and a partial. We will use the chain mode, the cut view, uh, many features of the 2016 version and of course many features of the Valletta version. The job definition is uh, a little bit special so I recommend to place on the teeth where you place the uh, attachment to choose here uh, telescopic crowns because this will allow you to to design a multilingual. So here we have selected a telescopic crown and we are using a pre-op. On tooth 1-2 we are using a reduced pontic. On tooth 11 uh, we are using a reduced crown with pre-op and on tooth 21, that's important, we are using a crown with a custom abutment. Yeah, let's proceed with the design. Of course, we will also use the smile design feature for the tooth placement. Please note the uh, implant uh, recommendation here in the notes of the project and a recommendation for the proportion guide uh, for the smile design. Yeah, here we see the scan files. So we have uh, a pre-op scan here. We have a scan locator antagonist and we have two cement retained crowns. Uh, in this case, we don't need to uh, correct the pre-op scan placement, but uh, later for the final demonstration, I will change the position of it so that we can um, correct the placement. In the first step, we use the virtual articulator. Before we uh, start the movement simulation, we show a new feature in Valletta, which is the, which you can find in the Witch Teeth Influence Articulation. And here it is new that you can uh, paint or brush parts on, on your mesh or on your scan, which will be ignored during the movement. You can also mark an entire tooth by a click. And these regions will be completely ignored when the software will execute the articulator movements. For this case, it's not really required, therefore we will reset it and we click OK and we start the movements. Okay. Once the articulator has been executed, we can repeat all the movements here in this articulator dialog. Then proceed to the next step. Yeah. Here we do or we detect the implant positions. I've added them to my favorites and in this case it's a uh, this and B BM pre -milled. We choose RP engaging and we do the best fit matching of the scan body here. Check how it looks in the scan. Okay. Then we define the emergence profile 
for our customer abutment, I would say for interior tees, this is very important. And it depends on the material. So, okay, like this. Don't lose too much time here by the design of the first uh, spline, because later on in the emergence profile design step, you can still change it much easier. Yeah, the margin lines have already been saved before, therefore we can simply continue here, just verify. By the way, margin lines are saved if you create a model. or if you proceed uh, to the partial software later. Yeah, here we already see the pre-milled part and we define the cement gaps. Okay, we use the default settings of this material here and we simply proceed to the next step. Yeah, this is the copy tools feature. We will not use this in this case, therefore we simply skip this step. Yeah, we start with the tools placement and we will use uh, the pre-op scan to do a first functional tools placement and then we go to the digital smile design to do a more aesthetical placement of the interiors. This is a nice example to show uh, the chain mode so I usually do such big placements or setups with the chain mode. I start with the UFOs on one side, then fix this one, choose the UFO on the other side, and fix this one as well. Then I usually adjust the size of the T's like this of the entire setup and you can also make them a little bit longer. Yeah, then I proceed with the canines. Yeah. Once the tooth has been placed, I will fix it. Then the other canine. You see now a difference here. If you move it like this with the green point, it's a little bit harder. If you check the red point, then it's much easier because then this tooth is not involved in scaling. Okay, then let's do the interiors. Okay. And posteriors on each side. Yeah. Usually I just use the chain mode just for a rough placement and then I proceed with the simple mode and then I do fine tweaking on my placement. Yeah, you can invest some time here in this placement as it is important for the interiors, for the bridge of the interiors. The posteriors are not so important here because they will serve only later as visualization or a reference when designing the partial. Yeah, you see here a special position of the two anteriors and this will be corrected in the restoration. We will try to do a regular placement here. You can also use here the contact colors which will help you to see contacts with the antagonists. And of course, you can also display the antagonist, which would obviously make sense here in this case.
Okay. Yeah, then we proceed to the next step. And now I will go to the expert mode and start the smile design tool to do some fine tweaking or to do some aesthetical or to do an aesthetical tooth placement, at least on the anteriors. We start by loading a retracted image. And here in this case we can use our pre-op to register the 3D scan with the 2D picture. Usually I choose the canines. The bigger the distance between the two points, the more accurate is the scaling uh, in your registration. Now you can do some fine tweaking here on the position and on the scaling and you have with the right mouse to correct the placement of the scans behind the picture. Just move it up a little bit like this and still some fine tweaking here. Yeah. Okay. Then we proceed with loading a smile dim design image, a smile image, sorry. And yeah, here it's much easier to register 2D with 2D. Again, yeah, we could now choose here this point and this point. And Again, we can do here by moving the points, do some fine tweaking. Then we proceed to the next step and here we draw a lip line. And then we place two points on the patient's eyes and we choose the proportion guide for this case. The 1.25 is the best one. And we can place our proportion guide. Place it here really in the center. Okay. And our our lower smile curve. We can also add additional curves. I usually also use the smile image to verify the smile curve. Yeah. Okay, then we proceed to the next step, which is the modeling in the 2D smile design. As I said, we try to work only on the interiors, therefore I will just select the interiors here. In these three screens you can see the setup from three different sides. And now we do a 2D placement here. 
and we do some fine tweaking on our functional placement. We can also work here in 3D like this. And at each step, you can also have a look at the preview. And of course, you can freeform. Now we can watch the result. You can also improve the preview because here you can now choose with a color picker the base and highlight color of your teeth. I choose as a base color here this orange between the teeth and as a highlight color one of the lightest parts of the tooth. Yeah, that's not so bad. You see, it's a little bit... Yeah, you need a little bit experience to work with it. And here's the result. And you can also go a step back and then continue your placement. with the colors you have improved here in the preview. Yeah, and that's the result of the smile design. You could now create a screenshot, send it to the patient or to the dentist. You do that here by copy image to clipboard or save image to file. And then we proceed. Yeah, now the wizard of the smile design has been finished, so it was a wizard in the expert mode, and we go back to our main wizard. Here in the wizard now, we are in the generate abutment bottom step. This is a very important step. Let's switch off or let's hide all the meshes we don't need. And I will set back to, yeah, I will switch off the rendering here of my true smile and we will continue <coughs> with the abutment bottoms. Yeah, here you might invest some time. Usually, to do it quickly, I add a few points and then I Place them slightly the inner side of my gingiva. And then usually I unstick them all and I will pull them down to go below the gingiva. And here you can now control as well the pressure on your gingiva. Yes. Don't be scared. What you see here is intrusion of about 0 0.3 milli millimeter. You can also verify this with the cut view. You can place it manually or you can, for example, go to an implant and say uh, show cut here and 
tilt card view to insertion direction. Now this is the direction of your implant and if you unlock now the rotation you can even rotate and you will stay here and you can rotate around your implant and you can check here for example the intrusions okay here you can see it's a little bit too much maybe yeah so this is the cut view tool Okay, yeah, the advanced settings, so here we have different parameters for this border um, and on the platform and we can also change the direction of the screw channel here. But I usually just use these sliders here and I create a kind of convex shape and I use the lower slider to create a concave angle or concave shape at the bottom of the emergence profile and here could also use this visualization by adjusting the slider correctly you can define the limits and then you can see if you're creating a pressure of maybe 0.2 millimeters or if there's a distance of 0.2 millimeters yeah so if you're working with orange then it's quite okay. Then we proceed to the next step. Yeah, in this step we can do some freeforming. Yeah, usually um, I just take the basal parts of my Pontix, I fix the equator and then I move these parts here into, into the jaw. Yeah. You can also add or remove and smooth and flatten. Don't be too critical here in the design because in any case it will be reduced later. Most important is just to adapt all the contact points with the occlusion, with the approximate contacts and on the Pontix and since Valletta we have a new feature which is meant to create cut all intersections and this will cut them all in one click. You could also use Control X to do that with a hotkey. Yeah, let's check again now the contacts in the show distances. There is also a new feature in the letter which is called show contacts and it would just show your contact points in a blue color. In the letter we have in the approximate contacts we have uh, new features like the disc cutters and block out neighbor collisions. So the disc cutters allow you to place such discs which will be placed automatically to an insertion direction and your approximate contact point will be then adapted uh, with a plain geometry at this disc cutter. This will be explained in a tutorial on our website. The same as for block out neighbor collisions, this will automatically choose your insertion direction and if you then click cut intersections it will automatically block out the neighbors parallel to the insertion direction. That's a rare, very nice tool. I think I would really recommend to use these, this each day. Yeah, let's do some fine tweaking here on our, on our design. You can also freeform or smooth a little bit to make it looking more natural. Yeah, then we proceed. And 
We could now adapt the design to the pre-op. This is not required. We just use the pre-op for a raw, for rough placement. And now we choose the insertion direction for our abutment. Here I would recommend to hide the anatomical parts. And to use the insertion of my dice like this. And don't don't be too critical, you can still change it while you are working on the abutment design. Okay, then we proceed to the next step. Very important step. Here we do the abutment design. And yeah, I usually move all the curves a little bit up like this and then I try to copy a little bit the shape of the other anterior tooth. On the tutorial on our website it, it's explained in detail how you in detail how you can quickly design such an abutment. Yeah now with control and shift I move the entire curve a little bit. Yeah, if you see here's a problem with the minimum thickness, don't worry, go to the advanced settings, go to milling parameters and decrease the minimum, minimum thickness if your manufacturing process allow, allows this. Yeah. And you can also work with those parameters for example, tool C will make a little bit more sharp edges. I'd recommend to use a value of one millimeter and tool A is responsible for the shoulder here. Yeah, like this, doesn't look that bad. Just try to avoid to have this. Can add some points if required. And create kind of flat areas to create a kind of protection against rotation. Then check it with your anatomy. Yeah. Maybe we can change again a little bit this insertion direction. Oh sorry, that was the insertion direction of the crowns. And we could maybe just slight change. Have a little bit more space here on the distal side. Then we proceed to the freeforming of the abutment. Yeah, usually I add some material here in this region. Like this. And then I smooth. And with some aggressive smoothing, can flatten a little bit here to create more space for the anatomy. Same here.
Okay, now it's a little bit too short. No problem, you can still use here two spots. Make it a little bit longer. Okay. Yeah. Then we proceed to the next step. Yes, uh, in this step now we choose the insertion for the telescope, so which means the insertion for insertion for our midlinguals and attachments. So you have to consider to consider about the insertion of your partial. Therefore, I try to avoid to have too much undercuts here in this region, and I will move it slightly into this direction. And you have to consider about the thickness here on the milk lingual, so therefore you have to find the right compromise between your insertion of the partial and of uh, your milk lingual, uh, of the thickness of your milk lingual. So let's have a look at this and then, yeah. Okay. That could be okay. We can still change this later if we want. Then we go to the telescope design. And here we now do the design of the milk linguals. So there's also a video tutorial available which shows that in detail. So usually I work very often with control and shift on the entire curve. First of all, I create this kind of border here to protect the gingiva later and then you place here on the distal side and on the mesial side you defined the point where you will stop with the ceramic later then with control and shift I move this curve inwards to ensure that I have the absolute minimum thickness here on the milk lingual and then I start creating I move, oh sorry, panic button, then I move this out, I add a point here to create here this kind of flat area because here we will later on add the attachment. And here I will also add a point because later we will um, create here this kind of interlock. Then usually I take with control and shift the upper curve outwards to have exactly the same distance and then I move it again inwards and with control and shift I click one on one of these symbols to create this this shoulder here. And yeah, this one sorry. This one can create the stop here for the ceramic. Here we will surround the interlock later. Yeah, and then you can start by defining the anatomical regions by clicking on these symbols. Yeah, and of course you can then just this here. Okay, let's switch on again my anatomical shape to verify a little bit the height of my milk lingual. Then the same on the other side. Uh, here I will do some individual changes.
Okay. Right here. Stop for the ceramic. And here. Sorry. Flat area. Yeah, sometimes you may click on an undesired symbol, so then use the under button. Control and shift this again. Yeah, you see also here the, the height of your multilingual. Yeah, usually. I would say about two millimeters is the minimum, so you have to find the compromise about functionality of your multilingual and the anatomical shape. And then again, click on all the symbols here. Okay, it's okay. We don't need to do that here in this region. Yeah, it doesn't look that bad. Okay, then we can proceed. Yeah, we proceed to the freeform step and here I recommend not to add the attachment because um, you still want to uh, shrink the anatomical part later and only the multilinguals of the telescopic rounds will be protected. You will see that later. Yeah, therefore we simply skip this step now we are in the last step of the primary parts of the abutment and we choose to design the superstructure now. We do again now the cement gap bottoms for the crowns on the abutments, but we can also change them again for the other crowns. And here in the shrinking step, we choose the default value of 0 0.8 to shrink the four anteriors except the telescopic crowns. We simply click on apply. And then we proceed to the next step. And here we go to the expert mode and we choose to shrink telescope's anatomy. And you see that now the milk lingual is protected from being shrunk. If you would have placed already the attachments, so they would have been shrunk again or shrunk also. Yeah, and then we choose here the same depth of the 0 0.8. And we shrink the anatomical part of the telescopic crowns. Okay, then we proceed in the wizard. We place the connectors. I choose a different for anteriors. I usually choose this uh, cross section and we could, as it is in metal, choose a six millimeter. You place the connectors. And this one is already selected 
correctly. Yeah, and then you can go to the free tab and do some fine tweaking here. With shift, you can still create some more space here in these regions. Yeah. Let's go back again here and just make it a little bit more rounded. Yeah. Okay, now we proceed to the freeform restoration. That's very important, as here we will now at the attachments. And here we can now do some fine tweaking on the entire restoration by smoothing, for example. I start with this and then we will add the attachments. We can also here, this is also very important, remove these borders here that have been created by the telescope. Pay attention because here you can also now destroy your multilingual as you can see here. So try to keep that and then just smooth where it's really required. And you can still now visualize the connector cross-section so you can see if it corresponds to the thickness that have you that you have placed in the connector step. Okay, now let's place the attachments. Here we choose the generic one, and this one corresponds to the pressure vertex, which we will be which will be used here in this case for the partial. Yeah, don't forget to check allow uh, cut on gingiva, I'm sorry, and then you apply. And then the other one. Yeah, then I create the interlocks. I do that with remove. So we do this, what we call a Boolean operation. I choose here design from rotation. And with my profile editor, I choose here this, this one. I change the height to make it parallel. And then I choose usually a width between 1.5 and then the radius should be the half, 0 0.75, depending on the tool that you are using later to mill this. Yeah, then you can place this here. I change the transparency to view with the, with the minimum thickness, and we can also because this will be recomputed if I intrude the minimum thickness, but we can take the decision to violate the minimum thickness if we want. And yes, this, this is allowed. We have a nice minimum minimum thickness of 0 0.6. And yeah, you see now here in this region, we could also measure with the cut view tool now. 
and then we place this here and then we apply yeah like this and then the same on the other side Okay, apply, and then again we can go back to the free form and do some fine tricking, for example, at some material here, as this was not designed perfectly. Okay, still smooth it. Can even smooth. The regions here. You can also use the flat shading, which I like here in this case. Then you see really how the geometry looks like. Yeah, here yeah, I wouldn't touch it here, it's perfect on this side. Okay, then we proceed. The restoration will be exported. We send this to the lab. They will put the ceramic. Then we will get back the bridge with the ceramic. We put the female part on the attachments. We scan it again and then in the second video or in the second part we will show you how you can create the partial. Thanks for watching.